Well, hello, everybody. 2020 is coming to a close. We are almost into the 2021 New Year, and I believe that it's going to be the best year for us yet because our best days are ahead of us. Hey, as we wrap up 2020, I want to tell you this. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for just loving us, putting up with us, being patient, and believing in what God is doing here through our ministry and through the gathering place. He really is establishing a place for times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Also, he is teaching us and encouraging us and equipping us to live our faith out more than Sunday. And so thank you for your partnership. As you consider ways to give during the end of this year, I want to tell you how to make sure that it counts for 2020. There's several ways to do it. Of course, if you come to our in-person gatherings, there's boxes that you can put your offering in. We don't pass baskets here at the church. We just encourage people to do what God's calling them to do, and we give them an opportunity to do it. Uh, but if you're wanting to give online, there's two simple ways to do it. You can text the word GIVE to the number on your screen and just simply follow the prompts. So again, type the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to the number on your screen and follow the prompts. It'll get you all set up so that you can give via text messaging on your phone. It's convenient and uh, it's completely safe. Also, you could go to our website and right at the top corner, you'll see a little button that says GIVE. If you follow that link, it'll take you to our online giving portal. And so that's a great way to do it. That's how I give. I set my tithe up to come out right after my paycheck comes out. You may be considering uh, how you could give as well. That's a great way to do it. I want to tell you this. Uh, at The Gathering Place, we never put any pressure on anybody to give. We're always grateful. This is what we want you to do. Simply hear from Jesus and do what he's telling you to do. I always find that that brings the best results for all of us. Well, once again, I'm excited about what God is doing in us so far, but I really do believe that 2021, God is going to continue and do something even greater than what we could think or imagine. And I hope that you have that same sense of expectation and faith as well. Again, thank you for your partnership. We love you. everybody and welcome to The Gathering Place. This is More Than Sunday. My name is Daniel Davenport. I'm the senior pastor along with my wife here at The Gathering Place. However, today I'm not with my wife. I'm actually with one of my favorite people in the world, my daughter Lydia Davenport. Say hi to us. Hi. Uh, Lydia is with us today and she's going to actually be walking through the word together. Mm -hmm. I, I think today's a special day because we're going to get into the word together. But before we do that, I just want to say a couple things. One is, if you're brand new, you just found us, thank you. So glad to have you joining us today. I'd love for you to uh, go to our website, find out more about The Gathering Place, tgpchurch.com. And if there's any way I can get to know you personally, I would love to do that, seeing you in person at our on-site, in-person services, gatherings on Sunday mornings at 930. But I would love to hear from you as well. You can send me an email uh, info at tgpchurch.com as well. All right, so today is Journal Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the month if you're watching this live, and uh, it's actually the last Sunday of the year, mm -hmm. and this is the time that we always like to set up for the year to come by putting an emphasis on the Word of God. We're going to learn how to uh, read the Bible in a very simple way, and I believe that every Christian should be equipped to read the Bible. Yeah. And and not only that, but to be able to understand how to apply it to their life, how to hear what God is saying, and instead of just you know grabbing hold of certain set of beliefs or you know uh, religious practices, we need to have a living relationship with Jesus. And the primary way we do that is through His Word, and so. Uh, Lydia, mm -hmm. you're, you've been with us for this Christmas break, and I'd love for you to introduce us. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life before we get started. Yeah, so I'm a senior at Oral Roberts University out in Oklahoma. I'm studying finance out there, and I have one semester left. And I'm really excited what the next season holds because it's going to be a dramatic change from going to college into the workforce. 
But as of right now, I get to take the next two weeks and enjoy, rest, and be here with you guys. Yeah, and we're very thankful to have you with us. Now, uh, Lydia, is, she's finishing up school. Mm -hmm. You're not totally single, but you're not married either. <laughs> I'm not married. Not no. engaged either. <laughs> No, 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 and uh, but we're very, and I'm very glad about both of those things. Uh -huh. uh, one of the rules I had for my daughters for dating, I said, okay, there's three rules for this guy. Number one, he had he has to be a tither. He has to be yes. a tither. Remember this, and, and the reason is because the tithe is ten percent of your income. So however much money you're making, you got to honor God with a tithe. That means bring that or give that back to him, ten percent of that. And I always figured, man, if you can't be trusted with 10% mm -hmm. of your, your income, how can I trust you with my daughter, right? How can I trust someone with my daughter? So that's why I always said he's got to be a tither, number one. Mm -hmm. Second thing is he needs to journal. He needs to have a living, active relationship with Jesus. Don't yeah. just tell me he's a Christian. Don't tell me he goes to church. <laughs> Don't tell me, oh, he reads his Bible or his... Mm -hmm. You know, family's been in church their whole life. I want to see evidence that he spends time with Jesus and spends time in this book. Yeah. That's actually what we're going to go through today uh -huh. as well, because we've got to live it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing, and this is, might even uh, arguably be one of the most important, is uh, he can't be ugly. Yeah, <laughs> that's can't... really important for the both of us. So. <laughs> it, it is, and and we have different reasons. Uh, you just want to, you know... you're be with a good looking guy right mm -hmm. and and my concern is i don't want ugly grandchildren <laughs> can you imagine you know those ugly grandkids and you're walking around someone says is that your grandkid i'm be like nope not my grandkid oh right my <laughs> and so i had to make sure that uh she doesn't date anyone ugly so there are several people who didn't pass those tests in the in the past and mm -hmm. uh so they're down by the wayside and we'll see what god has in store uh, he, he's got something he's working on already. So. Yes, he does. Hey, today, like I said, is, is Journal Sunday, so we're going to jump right into this. And uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, what we do as a practice here at The Gathering Place, and I encourage everybody to do it, is read your Bible. <laughs> if you want to know Jesus and know his plan for your life, read your Bible. But so many people don't actually know how to do that, yeah. right? What, you you take time. I've seen you. I see your Bible. It's all highlighted here. <laughs> and... Uh -huh. uh, and so when did you develop the practice of getting into the Word? Um, I think I developed it probably in middle school or so is when I started and learned how to do this process of journaling. Um, but through the years, it's changed of what it looks like. Sometimes it doesn't look like necessarily following a full-on journal and just sitting through and praying. And um, it really just depends on the season. And a lot recently, it's been reading at night and praying at night and... Um, it's been really, really good. And how, how has it strengthened you and helped you through the ups and downs of those difficult teenage years yeah. and having awesome parents and all that? That's true. Having awesome parents does help, but yeah. it's not exactly enough <laughs> to get through the teenage years. And so I think one of the things that's really helpful is that, um, you know, I've gone through a lot that I really don't talk about. And having to work through that internally, there's a lot... Um, that the word encourages you in and gives you and brings you peace in. And if you don't know the word, how is it supposed to encourage you? And so a lot of reason why like I have so much of this highlighted is because I needed to be in the word every single day in order to just get through every single day. And um, and so I think in that sense, it's just been one of my life source. It's been my life source of like, how do I move forward? How do I heal from certain things? And how do I live and flourish and how do I dream and prepare for the future because I can't do it on my own and I can't do it through Instagram. I've got to have the word of God. And yeah. through that, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, well, today what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through the journaling process. Let me explain mm -hmm. to you what I mean by that. Uh, in fact, if you want to get on the same reading plan as we have, uh, you can send me a little note, send me an email and say, hey, give me the reading plan. And I'll get it right out to you. And pretty soon we'll post it at our website as well. I, I actually have this journal here that in the back of it has the reading plan. And uh, sometimes those are available, but you don't need it. You can download it. You can print up a copy. Uh, I encourage people to have a plan. One thing I found is this, that those who don't have a plan typically don't read. <laughs> so, Or you kind of get lost. You don't know what to do. 
And there's something valuable about simply having a plan and going through the Bible, even though you may not understand it all, you might not enjoy every bit of it, you might not find every bit interesting, you might find that some areas really speak to you more than others, but there's something powerful about simply getting the whole Bible, the whole book into your you know, heart and mind and a familiarity with it. And, and once you're familiar with it, I really have found that the, the Holy Spirit's able to bring things back to our attention later on yep. when we need it. Mm-hmm. Although you might not feel like you need it right then, but it's like a seed being planted in your heart. Yeah. And so we, we, uh, we approach the, our reading, our journaling, uh, a little bit different than Bible study. Bible study, you get out your Bible, you read it, then you start to read and really try to understand the context, the history. You want to understand the language. You want to understand how it relates to all the other scriptures. You might even want to understand what other uh, men and women of God have said about this and experienced their, their experiences around it. And, and it gets really in-depth. And so when, we, when I talk about journaling and getting into the Word for your personal devotional life, that's not what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We're talking about reading the scripture and, and really uh, looking for life application, your personal life application. Now, I want to say this is important because your personal life application may not necessarily be what the scripture is talk- talking to everybody about. Right. So, for example, you might be praying about what to do after college, right? Yeah, lots and, of that. <laughs> and so... So as you're praying and you're reading the scripture, you might come across, you know, Jesus calling the accountant, right? <laughs> the tax collector <laughs> uh-huh. to come follow him. And you feel like, you know, I, I, I have this thing on the inside where I wanted to go into accounting or to become the tax lady, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. might, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like God is leading me there. Now, that might be what she is sensing and, and getting confirmation from the word about uh, maybe not. I'm, that could be a stretch. But, but here's the deal: anybody else reading that is not going to get that. Right. That's not what the scripture is telling everybody to do. Mm-hmm. But you just kind of can sense. You know, I feel like the Lord's leading me in a certain direction, and and He's He's speaking to me through the scripture. Yeah. I know when when we moved to Michigan to become pastors, we were in a great church in Southern California. But someone, our, our senior pastor asked us to plant a congregation out in Michigan. And so we took time to pray. And there were two scripture passages that the Lord brought to my mind. And when I went back and I read those scripture passages, I, fe- I felt like, oh, there, I'm getting clarity and confirmation from the Lord for life application for mm-hmm. us. But anybody else who read those passages would not have thought, I should move to Michigan. So you can see the distinction. This isn't... Uh, an attempt to find doctrine. This isn't an attempt to prove scripture to somebody else. This is an attempt to say, God, what are you saying to me through this passage? I'm looking for life application. Okay, Mm -hmm. So, so let me give you the process. The process for devotions, as we like to teach people, it's very simple. It's what we call the SOAP method. S stands for scripture, O, observation, A, application, and P is prayer. And so what you do is you start off and you read that passage for the day. And typically we read at least one chapter of the New Testament. Sometimes we'll add a couple chapters of the Old Testament. In the plan that I'll give you, it it will give you a plan so that you read the entire Bible in one year. But at least do the New Testament. And so today our reading is 1 John chapter 1. Mm -hmm. So we'll read the passage. In fact, in just a moment, I'm going to read this passage out loud uh, to you. Then we'll take the time to say, okay, what stands out to me? This is the observation. And so in the observation, you're kind of asking questions like, what what does this teach me about God? Mm -hmm. What is this passage or this portion telling me about mankind? Yeah. What's it telling me about myself? And and it's just an observation. It doesn't have to be, what is the Bible really trying to communicate to everybody here? It's just, what do I see? Mm Mm-hmm. And then the next step is A, application. And and what am I going to do about it? And I think this is really the key because Jesus said, uh, whoever comes to me, hears my sayings and does them, I'll show you whom he's like. He's like a man who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the winds came, the storm beat vehemently, 
but it could not shake that house because it was founded on the rock. But there was someone else who came and heard, but they didn't do. So life application with scripture is, is probably the most important mm -hmm. piece. It's more important than just knowing it. You have to apply it. And so uh, you got to look at this and ask the question, what am I supposed to do with what I just read? Mm -hmm. And you want to make that a regular practice when you go to church and you hear the message, when you feel like you've prayed and the Lord's leading you into something or showing you something. And just when you're reading your Bible, what am I supposed to do about it? Mm -hmm. And then you write that down. And then afterwards, you pray. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I believe that uh, most everything in life, the more we can simplify it, the better off we'll be. Yeah. So I hope you're ready. You want to grab your Bible and uh, let's, let's start reading. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And I think I might have the words up on the screen. They may or may not show up on your screen. <laughs> but here we go. 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his truth is not in us. Now, I'm walking you through the process that we would normally follow. If I'm doing this by myself, I'm at a coffee shop, I'm at home somewhere, I'm reading that quietly most likely, <laughs> especially if I'm at a coffee shop at home, maybe out loud. Uh, but then I'm going to take the time to, to kind of look back and say, what passage really jumped out at me? We did this already ourselves before the recording. Um, so we're going to jump ahead. But what you would do is just take a moment to process what you read and then write down the verse or verses that stood out to you. So yeah. it's not the whole passage. You just simply write that down, the, t the scripture, and you can't see it, but I'm going to put it right up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You get it. You'll get it here. You write down that, that scripture. And then you'll write down the application, uh, the observation and the application. But I'm gonna, we're going to take it another level today mm -hmm. of just instead of doing it individually, we're going to actually share with you our journal entries and we're going to talk about it. Because mm -hmm. I think there's something powerful about not only doing this personally, privately, right. but to regularly have someone in your life that you actually share what you're getting yeah. out of this. So uh, so what we would do if we're at, in a group, sitting around at a coffee shop or at a home, is we would take the time to write about 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes to share. And so let's do that sharing part okay. right now. You already have your, your coffee, I, I don't. So. I do. Uh, you, who, who's going first here, you or me? Well, um, I think I should go first. You should go first, I okay. I should go first. But, um, so I'm going to share with you the verse that I chose, which was 1 John 1, 3 through 4, <laughs> which, is that the one you chose too? That's the one I chose. <laughs> we did not do this together though. <laughs> That's why she wanted to go first. So, That's so exactly she why. doesn't look like she's copying me. Now I look like I'm copying her. Okay, exactly. go, go exactly. ahead and say it. <laughs> okay. Go and share. I look forward to learning from you. Uh-huh. Uh, and vice versa. Okay. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, over, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And I added verse 4, and I said, And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. So I journaled on 3 and 4. I broke the rules, and I did two verses no, you instead can do of many, one. <laughs> you can do as many verses as you want. It's some, you know, the original 
writing didn't have reverse Versus. numbers. Yeah. Okay. So my observation first, and I'm just going to read it, what, what I wrote down, and it is, fellowship with others is made through testimony and sharing of the word. True fellowship brings joy to others. Also, fellowship with the Lord is um, created through walking in the light, has shown in a later verse, verse 7. Um, and thus, you, myself, and the Father are able to have a unique bond of fellowship. And, um, and so that's my observation, is how fellowship is created with others and how fellowship is created with the Christ and how it all wraps up together in one unique bond of fellowship. Um, and moving forward onto my application and my personal application of this verse is to first challenge myself to be vulnerable to build fellowship with others through expressing what I've seen, heard, and discovered in his word. So exactly like we're doing today, mm -hmm. which is sharing what we read, sharing what we've observed, and sharing how we want to use it to apply to our lives. Um, that's what builds fellowship in between people. And to be honest, that's a challenge for me because a lot of times when I'm going out with friends and everything, it's not like, oh, hey, do you want to bring out your Bible real quick? Mm -hmm. And let's talk right, about right, what right. God spoke to you today through this scripture. But it's really like when you do get to do that, there's just this... Um, there's this fellowship that is created that can't be replaced with anything else. Um, so my first step is to like really strive to um, to build that with my mm -hmm. friends and people who are mentors to me. And then the second one, the second application, I like to list them out. It makes it easier for me to remember throughout the week what I've been challenged to mm -hmm. do. And that is to ask myself, in what areas am I not walking in the light? Like, in what areas am I not... Um, being kind to my siblings or <laughs> leaving my dishes around or just being lazy or my room's always a mess. You know, like those are just things that are just like, they're not, um, they're not sin or anything, but like they're definitely steps that I could be taking to be, um, to really build that fellowship with Christ and with others. Um, and would you like me to say my prayer as well? Or go no, we'll pray that? after. We'll pray after. Yeah. So. Yeah, Absolutely. So I love that. Uh, this is my, my mini me in so many ways because because our journals are so similar. I'm, I'm hearing you share. You're, you're a much better version of me than, than I am. So you're my mini me. I'm the rough draft. Re, re, the laugh draft. I, Laugh draft? <laughs> you're the laugh draft? The last draft. I'm the laugh draft. You're, I'm the rough draft. I do make you laugh. You're the so final draft. He's the rough draft. I'm the final draft. Yeah, I think that's how, how it works. Mm -hmm. um, a much, much better version, the new and improved version. And so I love that because as you're writing, you're saying, hey, I, I know that I, uh, I need to challenge myself, like, yeah. like to step out. And, and of course, it's not... It's not like every time you go out, you're gonna say, "Hey guys, let's let's have a Bible study or share everything Jesus is saying and doing," mm -hmm. uh, because that would be weird. Mm -hmm. But you got to have some people in your life where you do that with, yeah. and so which is kind of what I wrote. So, so we laughed because she chose the same verse that I did uh, from John chapter one. I chose verse three as well, and I'm gonna repeat it to you because. Uh, I don't want to feel like she stole my verse and I don't get to play in this game. So verse three says, that which we have heard and seen, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with the son, Jesus Christ. And so this is my observation that I wrote down. And by the way, I, I want to encourage you, uh, don't just bullet point, but write full sentences because later on, maybe months or a year, a year later, you might go back to this because you're like, hey, I remember God was saying something to me about this situation. And so when you go back, if you just see bullet points, you won't always know the context. So take the time to write out in full sentences so you can fully express yourself. Yeah. So my observation is this. Uh, the Apostle John saw and heard Jesus. He saw the miracles, the healing, the teachings, the love. He and they, the apostles, they experienced it firsthand. And so this is a unique experience that changed their lives, and they wanted to share it with others. This shared understanding leads to a shared experience, which enables people to have fellowship with one another and God. Mm -hmm. And so I think about this, like when, when you've had such a meaningful, powerful experience, 
and somebody you really care about has not had that experience, it's not like, it's not great <laughs> to, to, you know, like you want to express that and share it, but they just don't always get it. Yeah. And so, so John's saying, I want you to have that experience. So I'm sharing these things with you. Yeah. And I think that's some, something that's really, by the way, I'm, th- this is to me, I think, think I'm going to go off on the normal journaling thing because I, I would normally say, hey, just read what you wrote. But I'm going to share what, what I think <laughs> as well beyond what I wrote for time's sake. I think that it's something that's really um, awesome about God is that you don't have to have seen and experienced him firsthand in the flesh like yeah. John did in that same manner. Because Jesus is, he's died, buried, resurrected, ascended to heaven. But yet we can still experience him through the sharing. Right. Through He shows up through his word. He shows up through the... The fellowship. Okay, so uh, that's so you can be brought from the outside in. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm I, I'm seeing there from the scripture. So here's my application. Uh, how do I apply this to my life? What am I going to do about it? I need to make sure I have people in my life with whom we share what Jesus is saying and doing, what He's saying and doing in our lives, and. Just like you said, I yeah. mean the same thing, and and so so maybe both of us don't have enough people in our life we're doing Apparently. this with. <laughs> We've got the same problem. <laughs> but I need to make sure that I have that, and I've had it at, at many times, and I do have some people in my life. But I, I'm reading this, and I'm and I'm I'm sensing that the Lord is is, is telling me, no, this isn't just what you use, about what you used to do. It's what you need to begin yeah. to apply more so now, and. I need to make sure that this includes old friends and new. Mm. Uh, and I felt like that's because it's easy for me to either start this with new people as a pastor and mm-hmm. kind of just get comfortable with the old friends because uh, it's, you know, I don't know. It's let, Maybe we have a different relationship or it might be weird to say, hey, let's talk about what Jesus is doing in yeah. our lives. Or, or it just might be too easy to do that with them the old people and not new people. Mm-hmm. So I need, I feel like the Lord's saying, do it with old friends, but also with new. So include some new people into this. Uh, I need to build a group and I, and I put in parentheses with a question mark groups <laughs> of people who gather regularly uh, around what Jesus is saying and doing. And it's very simple like that. Um, I feel like, I feel like this is something that is, I've got to be intentional about in my life. Um, For me, personally, I know that I always grow more when I'm in connection with people like that Mm where we're talking about what God is doing in our lives. And I know it's easy to get to fall back into the pattern of just talking about what I'm doing. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And not what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And so when I share that common experience with others who are also having that common experience. Mm -hmm. We have fellowship together and truly our fellowship is with the father and the son, Jesus Christ. So normally what I would do is say, Hey, if you're going to do this in groups, um, ask one another a couple questions or give a little bit of feedback. And Mm -hmm. so what kind of questions or feedback would you have? I love this because one of my favorite things to do is uh, make people feel awkward. And I'm doing a great job of it right now. Right now, I feel pretty pretty awkward at the moment. (laughs) But you're doing great. You know what's funny is that we both shared some of the same things. Uh, Yeah. And uh, so so tell me something. What what's um, what are some of the 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 ways that you would overcome this? I mean, you think you're going to apply this? What are you going to do? You're going to go back to school? How are you going to apply this? Yeah. So. Going back to school, I have great friends, and I have a great community out there. It's honestly the most challenging being here without that. Um, But nonetheless, like, there's a couple friends that I would really like to, and who also really challenge me in my walk with the Lord, and I'm not, I haven't always been as intentional with them, but every time that I get together with them, it's, um, they're the ones that I grow with Mm -hmm. spiritually. And so I think moving forward into the next year is developing, strengthening those friendships and strengthening 
and making it more consistent because one of the things he said it was a consistent group. Um, right, right. And I have lots of friends, but I'm an inconsistent person when it comes to hanging out mm -hmm. <laughs> because I can just start off where we left off. And um, so building that consistency with others so that way it builds that fellowship and that vulnerability. It makes yeah. it easier to get there every single time. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do that too. <laughs> Ditto. Mm. Hey, so you can see the fellowship around the word uh, is good. It's easy. You don't need to be a Bible scholar. You don't need to have history reading the Bible. You don't need to have gone to Bible college or to even know what it all says. There's something powerful about doing this in groups because if you do come up with something that's just crazy and you're like, that is not what God is saying to anybody <laughs> in the world. He mm -hmm. is not saying that to you. That is not God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes that stuff comes up. You know what? You just have someone in that group say, oh, that's very interesting. Maybe you want to pass that by your pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Good because <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we hear crazy stuff or we think we see crazy stuff and and uh, that's all right. We're learning. We're trying to learn to hear the voice of God and grow in our relationship. And, and let me tell you something. God's not afraid. He's not afraid of you to try to hear his voice and try to apply it. He's not concerned that uh, he doesn't know what to do with you. He's got you. He's, he's going to take good care of you. Uh, for you to pursue the Lord and say, God, I want you to speak to me by your word today. You know what? He's faithful. He hears those prayers and he answers them and he'll speak to you. Uh, I want to remind you that if you want this reading plan, just send me a little note and I'll send it out to you via email. I'll get it to you. Also, I would love to meet you in person. Let's do the thing that um, the final part, it's P, prayer. P, prayer. And uh, you wrote a prayer. I did. And I always encourage people to write a, pray, a mm -hmm. prayer if you can, but sometimes you just take the time to pray as well. Yeah. Do you want to pray your prayer? And yeah. then I'll close this out. Yeah, I'll pray my prayer. And usually I don't always write it because I tend to write a really long application and observation and pray out loud. But it's really good to remember what you've prayed for and what God has answered because then you can look back and be like, I did pray for that and I prayed for it on this day and he's answered it on this day. So it's always good to write it down if you can. That's good. Um. But this is the prayer I wrote and will pray. Um, and I go, Father, thank you for desiring fellowship with us and for sending your Holy Spirit to guide us. I ask you for the courage and the boldness to share what you have done in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, with that, we want to do everything we can to encourage you to live your faith out more than Sunday. I look forward to meeting you in person or being right back here with you next week.